I'll be like, hello. Oh, oh hi. hi. <laughs> Our first Wednesday Wine Google Hangout on air. Woohoo! And today we have two other lovely ladies that are reviewing wines with me tonight. You've seen a few of them on our Wednesday wine videos. Um, so how would I introduce them to you first? And first we'll go to the lovely Kate. I'm going to make you the big person. Kate, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. Uh, my name's Kate, and I'm in Ottawa, coming to you live from Ottawa today as your uh, Ottawa wine correspondent. And um, yeah. I'm looking forward to reviewing a South African red wine. Woohoo! Okay, cool. Uh, and now we have Isabel. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Saying hey from San Francisco, California. Um, I guess your Wednesday Wine Wire correspondent down there. And uh, very excited to bring you a local wine from Mendocino County today. Woohoo! And not in the cupboard this time. Yes, not in the cupboard this time. <laughs> the cupboard for the special issue of Wednesday Wine. <laughs> All right, and I'm Carol here in Toronto, um, coming at you with a South African as well. So we decided the theme for this particular uh, first Google Hangout would be a sexy wine theme because we just happen to have someone that had a set of wine anyway. <laughs> but we feel like there's a lot of winemakers out there that like to label their things a little colorfully, um, especially in California, as we realized as we did some research. <laughs> so um, we've got two South Africans and a Californian wine to review. Um, any of you want to start off? Maybe, Kate, you want to start off with the South Africans? Sure. OK. So one second, let me move you over. Go ahead. OK. Um, so the wine that I picked is called um, Frisky Zebras. And it's a South African Shiraz. Um, it's Love one the label. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's probably backwards, but uh, it's pretty colorful. It's got all kinds of awards. It's won a gold award, a silver award. It's also, oh, um, in honor of, uh, it's a day late, but it was Earth Day this week. Um, this wine is not only certified carbon neutral, it's also fair trade. So that's pretty yeah. impressive. I like that. Very impressive. Um, so yeah, it's apparently uh, kind of like a fruitier wine with blackberries, black currants, and peppercorns. Um, I've already had a little bit, and uh, the first thing that I really noticed about it is it is very kind of spicy. The peppery side of it really stood out for me, um, which I liked. Um, it's a little, uh, it's not as smooth as I thought it would be. Um, so it's still pretty drinkable. Um, I'd recommend it, uh, but it is very spicy, and... Um, not as kind of fruity. It's more kind of like a black currant fruit than like a kind of smooth cherry or something along those lines. So if you like your wine with a little bit of a bite, maybe this would be a good one for you. So I'm going to say this is probably a um, Thursday wine. So I guess if you're getting together and um, hanging out with your friends and, and, and want to go for a kind of spicy... Uh, enticing, uh, that you know, peppery kind of wine. Then uh, give this one a try, and uh, see what you think of it. So that's my review of this wine. Is it like is spicy kind of a? Is that kind of your thing? Do you like wines like that usually? Like, what's your what? What are your favorite kind of wines? Like, what do you like? It's it's I kind of go for the sort of meaty, full-bodied kind of wines, and this one isn't quite what I'm used to, so maybe more of a, like I'm more used to a cab or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not against Shirazes, and I think this one is still, um, it's a good wine. I, I certainly, um, I like the flavor of it, and I'm it's enjoying it so far. I so. have a question. Um, sure. 
Can you describe the nose and the color? Mm, okay. The color, I don't know if it shows up very well on the computer, but definitely a very kind of purpley, deep color. Um, and the nose, I don't know, it's, it's, it's definitely fruity. It's huh? not as, it's it's not as spicy on the. So you don't get the pepper on the nose. Not as much. No, it's more of a kind of like. I'm trying to describe what. Yeah, I don't, I don't exactly what to call it, but um, yeah, not as not as spicy as when you actually drink it. So it's interesting. Uh, is it something that you would recommend with certain kind of food, or do you think it's more like a kind of drink? on its own wine. I don't know. I'm I don't I don't know enough about how to pair wine, so I'm not really sure um, how you would pair it, but yeah. because it is very spicy, I'm I'm not sure if it would go with something that's too strong, you know what I mean, because it's very spicy itself. Yeah. So maybe I'm like not a sure. sharp cheese. Like a little creaminess to kind of offset the spice. Well, that Sounds good. <laughs> I wouldn't argue with some cheese to go with my wine. So, uh, yeah, for sure. How about some brie or some? Yeah. You know, that sounds good. Some Can you come over, Isabel? Let's have some wine and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had Let's dinner yet. Right so I think I'm just feeling hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, those are my thoughts. On do, that you like, do you think you'd pick it up again, the frisky I, I probably would, yeah. I, I think I enjoyed it enough that I would I would probably give it another go. Cool. So Thursday, Thursday, out with friends, a little spice in your life kind of wine then. Yeah. Ah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe with friends. I don't know if you'd want you'd be out eating or if you'd be more just kind of. <laughs> that's funny. It makes it sound like I'm recommending you drink it in public with your friends, but that's not really <laughs> what I meant. I meant more drink it in private. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it with friends, maybe with some cheese, maybe not a, a you know heavy dinner. So okay, cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> no worries. That's frisky wine, Isabel. Do you want to take the next one? Sure, absolutely. So in keeping with the sexy wine theme, I present Wild Thing from Mendocino County in. Uh, Does it make California. your heart sing? Sorry. Does it make your heart sing? It, it, well, I, once I taste it, maybe we'll see. You'll have to wait until I take a sip. So this, oddly enough, um, is not only in keeping with the sexy theme that Kate kicked us off with, but it is also another fair trade wine, um, mm. which is pretty interesting. Small, uh, small case produce. I think they only made a couple of barrels of this wine, so um, I'm not sure how widely available it is. I got this... Uh, for about seventeen fifty, from a, a wine store that's close to my house. So again, another deviation from my usual grocery store picks. I'm getting a little bit classier. <laughs> this is pretty interesting, and I, I picked this because it had this little inscription in the back. It says, watch out for the deliciousness of this wild thing. You are what you drink. Oh, and I I'm like, okay, let's Pretty let's wild. Channel the wild stuff. I'm feeling pretty <laughs> wild today. So here it is in the glass. Um, I actually took some time to decant this wine. It's a Zinfandel. So I find that decanting things like Zins um, open it up a little bit. Um, a lot of people drink Zin from the bottle, uh, feel like they have to save the decanting for the deeper reds, but I'm not. Um, I'm just getting my palate. Uh, acquainted with a lot of red wine, so I figure giving it as much air and oxygen as possible is good. Um, it's got great legs, keeping with the sexy Hot theme. legs! Hot legs! <laughs> I wish you guys could see this. They're kind of like trickling slowly down the glass in slow motion, very tantalizing. Actually um, trickling. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> um, it's got sort of like a, like a garnet color, not a little bit dark and flat sort of in the middle and then it sort of expands into this lighter reddish color on the edges. 
The smell is a little misleading because it doesn't really smell anything other than red oh. wine. So it's not characteristic of any particular type of fruit or any particular type of spice. So in Lawrence's world, words, it has a general red wine smell. It has a general red wine smell. <laughs> you can't argue like with that. You are thinking of him and raising yeah. him a glass. Yes. So um, let's give it a try. Let's see if it doesn't taste like anything in particular as well. So here's the interesting thing about this wine. It is kind of fruity on the taste, even though not very fruity in the nose. And then it's kind of got like this creaminess Ooh. to the back. It's like kind of a smoothness, but just a little bit stickier without being buttery. Like, you know, buttery's kind of got that slippery in your mouth feel. This is kind of smooth, but slightly sticky. So I'll, I'll say that's kind of a creamy aftertaste of the wine. Like whipped cream? Mm. More like a heavy cream, I would say. Okay. Like sort of a half and half if you accidentally drink it before putting it in your coffee. <laughs> Actually, if you put more half and half in your coffee than coffee, then this is kind of the taste that it evokes. But with some fruity tinges in the back. So it's really interesting. <clears throat> kind of like a wine that makes you want to go drink some more, drink some more, trying to figure out why it's so complex. I wouldn't say it's like the wildest wine that I've tried, but it's certainly uh, a very nuanced wine, all things considered. So, pretty darn tasty, I'd say. Um, in, in terms of the day of the week, now that's a little bit more of a challenge. I kind of see this as more of a Friday wine. Like, you know, you're not rushing to go out somewhere, you've just come from a hard week at work. Just kind of want to relax, take it easy, um, and maybe as you're going through your Netflix selection, you're probably like cozying down with a bottle of this, going like, hmm, I'll have another taste, and that sounds interesting, and should I rewatch The Avengers, or am I going to go <laughs> watch a documentary today, or I don't know. So that would be my recommendation for this. Um, in terms of eating, um, since it's got like sort of an interesting taste, I can see it pairing well with a lot of um, tomato-based sauces, maybe some meats, but not re you probably wouldn't taste a lot of the wine if you do that. So maybe pretzels? Pretzels? Pretzels, pretzels. good, yes. Friday pretzels. Love it. Popcorn? Movie popcorn? Po anything is good with popcorn, but yes, <laughs> definitely. Can we talk Cheers. about... Can we talk about the Zinfandel grape? Because I feel like there are wines out there that have ruined Zinfandels for the world because everybody kind of associates it with drinking when you're like 17, 18 years old mm -hmm. and that's like the first thing you have are like Zinfandels that are pink in color or white and they're just awful. And um, I just would never pick one up because I'm just so traumatized from all the Zinfandels that I, you know, you, you have when you're younger, it would, like, I mean, like, I can't even, I don't even know what a Zinfandel really tastes like, because all I taste in my mouth when I think about Zinfandels is sugar, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I definitely think Zinfandel is a bit of a polarizing wine, because people get introduced to it at, like, sort of as a white Zinfandel or a rosé Zinfandel, so then that association is there. I mean, the interesting thing whenever I taste wine is I can only recall um, a description that I've experienced myself. So okay. I feel like part of establishing your wine vocabulary is trying to taste as many things as you can, which is why this is so awesome. Um, and just giving yourself a chance to experience sort of like the sensation of different wines. So Carol, I would advise you to pick up some new Zinfandels, maybe some heavier ones, stay away from the pinky or the white stuff, and give it a shot. Because, you know, I think the California Zins in particular might might surprise you. I think I was at the liquor store today, and they had, it's like, I think it was like, what was it called? Like Seven Deadly Zins or something like that? Some pun like that on Zin. 
Mm. And I was like, oh, should I get it? No, I don't know. It's Zinfandel. Well, I'm probably not going to like it. And I just didn't, just walked away. And it was actually in, I think, the vintages section. So I'm sure you could probably Ooh. get a pretty good. Or it was like, I it had like a, it had like a, like a double archbishop on the front or something. It was <laughs> really, like interesting. And I was like, should I get this? I don't know. It was California too. So next time. But not, not in keeping with our sexy theme unless no. you're into archbishops. No. <laughs> no. That would be a zin. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe next time, Carol, maybe you can grab that one and give it a try. Yeah. Yeah, we can try, like, I don't know, papal themed wine. <laughs> <laughs> How many of the, those are there, really? I don't know. Oh, it's going to be a perfect challenge. It's great. <laughs> All right, Carol, you're up. Give us a okay. taste. Tell yes. us what you think. So, I also have a South African wine. Um, I actually had a couple options, but I think this is probably the, the sexiest one. It's called The Grinder. Love but, the name. But it actually is The Grinder as in like a coffee grinder, but we'll oh. make it sexy and call it <laughs> The Grinder. <laughs> this kind of grinder. Love the label. <laughs> um, it's got like this cool vintage label with a little thing. It's a Pinotage. Uh, 2012 South African. It has won a gold medal. Ooh. Ooh. And um, I've tried this before. It was actually it's actually the first coffee kind of flavored wine that I've had ever. Um, and I had it actually in Ottawa, at, um, a nice uh, restaurant called Play. And I was so happy to see it again because I, I, I don't often see it in a lot of the LCBOs around me. So it was there, and I was like, sweet, I gotta pick it up. Um, so it's a Pinotage. Yeah, let me just pour a little bit into my glass. I've already had some of this. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. it up. So here's the wine. It's Do a Lawrence pour. I did already, but maybe halfway up is better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sploosh. P.S. These wine glasses can hold half a bottle of wine in them, so it's a lot of wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> color-wise, it's very purple. That's the first thing that I see. It's not a red or like a berry-colored wine. It's definitely purpley. Before I put half a bottle of wine in my glass, it was very purpley. Um, the nose is not coffee-like. It's hard to tell because I can't get my nose in there because there's too much wine in my glass. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just taste it. Get some of it. <laughs> So, I don't know if you, actually I do know you guys are coffee addicts, <laughs> I don't know if anyone else is, but you take wine and you add coffee and you have the most beautiful thing in the world. <laughs> um, so the nice thing about this wine is it's still wine. It just has the aroma in, of coffee and it's tough to say because I don't really smell it on the nose, but once you drink it. It's the aroma. I don't know how to describe it. I know aroma is something you smell, but even when you're tasting things, you're smelling things, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it just adds a second or third layer to the back of the wine that's just really nice and pleasant. Um, and it, it's not, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's a very leggy wine. It's pretty, I would say, light to medium bodied. It's, it's hard. It's so hard to tell because I have so much wine in this glass. <laughs> Wait, more. Wait, more drinking. Mm. Yes, empty it. Chug, chug. Oh, wait. <laughs> Wrong web series. <laughs> <laughs> no to that. Um, I'd like it's just it's just other than the the coffee, it's hard to really describe. There aren't any fruits in it. It's not a particularly it's a very smooth, kind of mild mannered, mild mannered red wine, and then you have coffee in it, which is the opposite of mild mannered. So it's a really interesting wine. Um, I really like it, and it's, I think, pretty versatile. I don't know that you'd want to have it with any heavy foods like steak or peppery type things or spicy things because you just it would just be like water. You wouldn't get the flavor. Um, I think it's one of those um, sit and pour, relax kind of wines or like, hey, I'm at a party, dinner party or something like that. I'm just kind of talking. This is a really good wine to have or if you're having like a pretty light lunch, 
Lunch wine. <laughs> lunch wine. <laughs> so lunch wine. this would be an amazing business wine, uh, but I think it's better than like a Tuesday business wine or like a weekday business wine. Um, I think it. I, I think it's very versatile. That's what I would say. And I. One of the wines I think a lot of people can appreciate. Um, at the end of the day, I'm not a sommelier. I'm not like a wine connoisseur of any sort. I just drink wine. Um, and I feel like anybody that has this and it's like maybe they're just getting into reds or trying wine for the first time, this would be a good one to start off with because it's just mild enough, but it's got something a little bit different on the side. And it's, I think, only like $15. It's not that expensive. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, really cool. It won the Michelangelo 2013 International Wine Award. So, mm. um, yeah, so South Africa. What's the, um, what's the vineyard? Uh, the vineyard, it's by the Grape Grinder. That's the vineyard. Cool. Yeah. What so, year? It's 2012. Para okay, P A A R L South Africa Paral P A A P A A R L Oh Paral Paral yeah yeah Where's that Paral is um in it's in Cape Town like sort of in the Cape Town uh, Western Cape region of South Africa Okay cool okay. Yeah so I don't Oh know. Cape your wine, where, what vineyard, and what year? Oh, mine is, well, wine of origin, Western Cape, it says. Product of South Africa. Um, it's a, what is it? Uh, I thought it said on here. I thought you said. 2011? I think it was 2012. No, I think it was 2011. Wait. 2011? One second. We'll find out. Yeah, because 14%, the wine, the grapes, fair trade. 100%. Oh, what's the alcohol content? We haven't asked that yet. Oh, this one's 14%. Holy! <laughs> okay, so so your wine, Kate? Yeah. I just looked it up on the LC. Okay, the LCBO, the Liquor Board of Ontario. Yeah. Great sometimes, but not great other times. But the, the fact that they catalog all their wines and they tell you where you can get them is awesome. Oh, I know. They're uh, all cataloged. It's amazing. Yeah, so it's really cool. But I just looked it up, and it says that this one is by the United Nations of Wine. That's oh, cool. Weird. Uh, I'm glad you know because I can't find on the bottle. So yeah, um, it doesn't have. I'm just trying to see here. I, it doesn't actually have the years. So yeah, why does it? I thought it was going crazy. I can't find the year on the label. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. So have it's like, how much of that wine have you had? I know. <laughs> I'm like, it's pretty strong, but it's not that strong. So this wine really that I'm having is a 14.5. Oh, there you go. So you be me. Is actually pretty heavy for a wine. Um, it's a, this one is a 2011. Um, it's from a place called Hopland, CA. Um, mm. Vinted and bottled by Carol Shelton Wines. I've never heard them, but I am going up to Mendocino in a bit, so maybe it's time to take a look at this. Yeah. So, Carol, what food um, you said like maybe nothing paired with food? I think maybe nothing because. I just think I just think well I mean if you're having lunch I think it's like a lunch thing and lunch is usually like sandwiches or salad it usually isn't anything too heavy or too spicy right so I feel like lunch would be good for this only because then you can really appreciate that just slight coffee quality to your wine you know what it almost tastes like it's like I took my coffee grounds and let it sit in my wine glass and then chuck them out and then poured my wine in it. That's what it tastes like. And it's not a bad taste. That's the weird thing is it actually tastes really good. So um, on the bottle, I will say what the bottle says you're supposed to eat it with. It says, delicious with smoked pork ribs. Ooh. Ooh. I like this wine more and more. 
I know, me too. And it's now that I think about it, I think smoky things would taste really good with this, but not spicy things. I wouldn't say spicy things. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes I don't agree with everything that they say on the back of wine, mm -hmm. but I, I agree with most. Like nose is, I don't smell any of the coffee on the nose on this. So it says that we, I should, I should get an upfront nose of mocha and coffee, and I definitely don't. But you, you get that like hint in the mouth. It's awesome. I found that with my wine too, actually. Like it says specifically that, that it's supposed to have whispers of vanilla and melted dark chocolate. And I had none of that. I couldn't. I didn't detect anything like that. So, okay, not quite. My brother is staying over with me tonight, so I actually have to like grab him from downstairs. So talk amongst yourselves for a little bit. I'll put the camera <laughs> on you, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> well, my my next question was gonna be, um, how would it be if you took your coffee and had a little hint of wine in it? Do you think it would be as good or not? <laughs> Oh, I think no. Questions. Ask us about questions because I have to go. One sec. Oh, yeah, Wait, yeah. Does it, does it automatically like default to me whenever I'm talking? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I can, everyone can a little bit more own. about yourself and what your, what your go-to wine is. Me? Yes, you. Me? I, I don't, okay. I don't, I don't drink a lot of wine. I don't know that much about wine. I just know when I like a wine. And for me, that tends to be wines that are a bit um, heavier and kind of richer. Um, but I don't drink enough to really know exactly, you know, that's pretty much all I know. So I'm kind of building my, my wine repertoire as I go here. So hopefully I'll have a little more to... Uh, fall back on once I've done a few reviews. Do you have a go-to wine? Not really, no. I There's maybe a couple that I see in the store once in a while like that I've had. Um, oh, now I'm going to forget the name of it. Um, there's one that my parents actually introduced me to that I like, um, but now I can't remember the name of it. Um, but, yeah, I think it's a... I, I think it's a cab. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, anyway, yeah, no, I really don't. I I love wines with um, r ridiculous names. I'm finding that out that I I really enjoy wines that are ridiculous. Awesome. So, what? How about you? Wait. You have who? a go-to? You me or oh, Carol's back. I'm back, but it's on you right now as well. We were talking about go-to wines. I was asking Isabel if she has a, a go-to wine. You have so many, like, you're in California, right? So you've got quite a lot to choose from, it sounds like. There's, there's a lot of pressure now being in, like, just south of wine country to actually know what you're talking about, and <laughs> that was part of the reason why I started expanding my wine vocabulary. Mm. Wine was purely recreational before <laughs> and refreshing. And it's not but now, right? <laughs> now it's kind of a little bit more nuanced and there's a little bit more, I mean it's a great meditative exercise having like a glass of wine because you really have to engage your senses, so many of them. And to really stop and think about what it is that you're tasting and you're smelling. So I think the practice of drinking wine as well is what's drawing me to this whole experience and what gets me interested in, in sampling different ones because then you're kind of like, normally I would just open up a bottle of wine and just start chugging away. But now it's like, oh, maybe I'll stop and figure out, is that a peach? Is that a pineapple? Is that a tangerine? Or like... You know, so it's it's kind of nice um, to find moments in your life where you can do that, and um, and the wealth of wine that's available in this part of the world is ridiculous. Like I didn't know this living in Canada and Ontario specifically, being bound by the constraints of the LCBO. But here, everywhere you turn, people sell wine. People sell wine at like the Walgreens and huh. Trader yeah. Joe's, like. Yeah. Anywhere at all. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a pop-up shop and some dude was like selling wine behind newspapers. Like <laughs> they are so weird with their wine distribution here. But 
to my credit, I guess um, there's a lot of accessible wines. So my go-to wine, hmm, if I had like, if I was picking a white, my go-to is usually a Pinot Grigio because it's amazing to drink in the summer. It's so light and refreshing. And if it's cold and gross outside, if I drink it, it makes me feel like it's summer again. Yeah. So that's my go-to white. Um, for my reds, I actually am really digging um, Petit Syrahs. I'm not a big, like, heavy, tannin, kind of, like, kind of red wine person. So unlike you, Kate, I don't like like the too, too heavy, too, too rich. And I find the Petit Syrah sort of coasts the line between like still being light, but having enough body to sort of have a lot of flavor. Cool. Mm -hmm. Carol, I have a visitor. Yay, welcome. Carol Hello. plus one. Hello. This Hi. is Ben. Hello, say hi to the people, the zero viewers that we have watching this right now. Hi. What's up, Ben? Um, How's it going? So I just poured him a glass of the one that I had, and I didn't show him the bottle. So he get into the shot. <laughs> so thoughts. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I don't have a good vocabulary, so I can't exactly describe what I'm tasting right now. He also doesn't have a he also doesn't have a good sense of smell, so that doesn't help. <laughs> no. But it's not it's not nose forward, Carol. You said it's all taste. It's not strong, so I I don't mind that. I'm not really a big wine drinker right now. So for me, I can get into this. That's what I said. Pretty so. easily. Oh yeah, yeah. The only thing is, if you don't have a good sense of smell, it usually means that your taste is also a little bit limited. Um, so, but I mean, that's great that you like it because a lot of times with people with don't have a sense of smell, they like to like overpower their palate with like spicy, hot, peppery things because they just can't taste anything, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, this is actually a coffee pinotage, so it's got coffee flavor in it. You can't really taste the coffee. I know because it's very, very mild. You really have to. I'm, I'm really curious to try that one now. Maybe I'll look it up. There's this one. Um, Maybe for another of you, I have an empty bottle of this one, which is the bean. This ah, one, oh yes. This one is like you can you can smell it in there that it's coffee. Being a coffee fiend, that kind of intrigues me. Yeah, it's really it, good. yeah. It, it's bit. it's really like this was like really like coffee. Oh my god, it's coffee. It almost kind of went to a dessert wine. Uh, but I, I just I not quite a dessert wine though. Not like a quart or anything. But yeah, you like it. It's not pretty bad. good, right? So that's what I was saying. Like, it's just kind of a little bit in between, which is nice for people that are just getting into red. Um, sometimes white, I find, when you're new to wine, is almost either super sweet or too dry for a lot of people. And so even that's sometimes it's tough to find a good white um, if you're just starting. Cool. Want to piece out now? Then what's your yeah. what's your go-to wine? Oh, go -to he doesn't have one. It's this pretty one. much whatever she's serving us. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so... Okay, Carol, uh, what's your go-to wine? Uh, okay, so go-to. Um, I Grape-wise, I usually end up picking up... Um, I started off with a lot of Cabernet Sauvignons, um, and there are a myriad of them, especially lots of lovely ones from Chile, but I'm finding that I actually like Pinot Noirs. I don't know... It definitely wasn't because I watched... Sideways. Sideways. <laughs> watched that recently, so that's not why. No, if I like, you don't like Merlots too. Yeah, that's the funny <laughs> thing is, like, I just, you know, it's one of those things. It just kind of happened, and um, so yeah, I really Pinots are interesting. The funny thing that is, though, I don't know. It sometimes depends on where you're getting your Pinots from. So French Pinots, I love. Um, I'm finding regional tastes are starting to come up quite a bit. Um, so Pinots are great. I love a cab, but you know I, I have to be having like a steak dinner if I'm drinking a cab for the most part. Um, I think one of the reasons why we started, I started drinking Pinots is I, I had a really lovely French Pinot at a French restaurant, and um, I was just like, this wine is great. We, we you know me and my boyfriend we got a bottle, 
and we just were like, okay, let's try this French Pinot that this waiter is recommending to us, and like I couldn't believe it because before then it was always Cab, Cab Sauvignon, Cab Sauvignon, like you know, Cabernet, 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 and like nothing else, right? Um, and prior to that, I had tried a Pinot Noir, unfortunately from Ontario, and it wasn't great. It had like grass notes to it, which isn't nice <laughs> to have in wine. So, um, so I had kind of moved away from that grape, and then we tried this beautiful Pinot, and we're like, oh my god, like Pinot Noirs, this is awesome. And you can get some really cheap and decent Pinot Noirs, French ones, um, all over the like any wine store or LCBO in Canada, so that's awesome. So Pinots, and then whites I'm just starting to get into, um, but I really like Rieslings. Rieslings are my go-to white wine. Oh, Rieslings. They're yeah. just so pretty. <laughs> Awesome. Like I love Carol, when you come over, um, I have like a white Riesling that I'm waiting to bust out uh, mm -hmm. from is a kosher winery in San Francisco called oh. Is is it Hagafen, the two thousand? It's Hagafen. Oh, you might remember <laughs> from I moved at home and finished it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm saving the one that I got. Okay, yes. You know. Awesome. Cool. All right, I think um, I think we can wrap it up, I guess. Um, thank you so much for joining me, ladies. I thought this was super fun. I think we can definitely do another thing like this maybe next week. Theme-wise, I don't know. I think maybe we, we should poll people that watch our videos to see what they, would, what they think would be a good theme. Um, themes off the top of my head. Uh, maybe some book or literary themes. Uh, maybe like celebrity-endorsed wines. You know, is it all hype? And promotion, or are they actually good vineyards, right? Um, any, I don't know. Any other themes that you guys can think of? Well, papal wine now. <laughs> yeah. The archbishop. Yeah. And seven. <laughs> a little bit naughty to be drinking like. Seven deadly zins or whatever. Like I, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's true. very That's good. good. Um, I would like to see like themes where we try like the same wine varietal from like maybe different regions. Mm -hmm. So we can even do something like, I don't know, try like a port or something, mm -hmm. you know, branching out into different arenas like in the type of wine, but try it from different areas. Cool. Any ideas, Kate? That sounds good to me. I mean, uh, from my perspective, not having drank a lot of wines, I mean, um, at least not without paying really strong attention to them. Um, yeah, you know, it'd be exciting to me to, to kind of expand my repertoire a little bit and maybe try some wine from different regions or kind of learn learn the, um, like the characteristics of each region and each kind of grape and that kind of thing. So um, something educational like that would be pretty cool. Cool. All right, well, I think that wraps it up. Um, Cheers to everybody who will watch this tomorrow when it gets posted. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for hosting. Cheers. Thanks for, for hosting. 40% wine glasses. Bye. Bye. <laughs>